So a lot of times when I'm teaching piano students or music producers, like what's the point of learning open voiced chords or just chord voicings in general? You know, for instance, you can have something where you're learning a chord and you're learning piano as a music producer and you learn about a triad, right? And most people are always trying to, you know, learn how to use all these different triads. Where you go past that is with a chord voicing and with synthesizers, it really matters. Um, let's say if you play that same triad, you know, with both hands. This is kind of like a nice deep ambient pad sound. It can have a lot of mid-range frequencies, like it can kind of fill up the mix quite a lot if you're just playing these kind of voicings where the notes are right next to each other. So what I would do is actually try different voicing. I would take this triad and let's take off the third and present it up here like that. Now this is the same chord as this, but this is going to sound a little bit less full. So there's more balance in it. And a cool thing with bringing the third up an octave, maybe playing it with your right hand while the power chord is in your left, is that you can double up that interval with your right hand like this. So you have this nice... And you can move this top voicing down like a melody. And that kind of creates movement. So if you're, if you're actually practicing like a, a chord progression, you could actually, like let's say we take a really famous um, minor key chord progression is what I call the one flat six, which is I'm going from the one chord, which is C minor, down two whole steps to a major chord, in this case, A flat. So what I would do is do this exact same thing. And when I hit the C, I land here and continue the melody in the top line, right? So you have... And so you can actually add a lot of movement to the chords melodically as well. And it's really nice for pads because pads can be a little bit too full sounding with these big closed, I call them closed shapes because the intervals are very close together. And they can be kind of too thick and overwhelming. Break it up. Just take those intervals out, move them between the two hands. And then as you do chord progressions, you can create lines with the highest voicing. It's very musical, very fun, and very logical to approach when you're practicing or making beats. So here's another example. Um, it's a different sound. By the way, if you guys like these sounds, I made an entire Drift preset library that's in the link down below. You can check that out if you want. And also hundreds and hundreds of MIDI clips that I produce for my Patreons. But this example is kind of a similar idea, right? So we're taking a simple C minor chord. We're doubling up the third. And what's happening here is I'm actually going to a G minor chord, but notice how the G, uh, the G is not in the bass. It's B flat, D, and G. So that's an inversion. And when you're learning piano for yourself with your music, that's why inversions can really help because if you have a thick kind of synth pad sound, if you can let the chord voicings kind of naturally move to the nearest, closest notes, it makes things have this smooth movement. Like in music school, you learn about voice leading. This is kind of a similar idea where the chords lead into each other. In this case, everything's kind of going down. So it works really well. And in the right hand, you can have the melodic movement follow a contrary direction. So my right hand is just playing one note, right? I'm playing C over the top, D over the top. I jump up to the G over the top. So you have like a cool melodic thing happening 
And the funny thing about it is if you're just playing a simple inversion chord progression in the left hand, your right hand can kind of explore the different notes, in this case, the C minor scale, that work really well over those chords. So you'll find that melodies can have different directions, right? So I might have started the example like this. Melody comes down, then it jumps up, resolves back down. Or I can have the melody start on C, rise up, jump up, resolve down. Another one you can do is start on a non-chord tone. So maybe I'll start on the minor seventh. Drop to the root of G minor. Stay on G over the A flat. Non-chord tone. Resolve to a chord tone. So you can see what I'm doing there. It's my right hand that's just playing one note. But on a synth pad, it's a very thick sound, right? It's very different than when you're practicing on piano. This is why I always say, like, when you're making beats or you're practicing on the piano what you're doing, you know, this might not sound as exciting, <laughs> basically. It sounds very small and simple. So when you're practicing, you're like, yeah, whatever, you know? But you might want to practice on a synthesizer so that all these different moves that you can do um, you can get used to what they feel like with that sound design, you know, putting things in context, right? So what I'm doing there is the same exact idea as the previous example. But I'm having, I'm playing octaves in the right hand, right? And the voices are also really split apart. So I have this really nice, warm, deep sound down below. And here I'm playing a one flat nine style chord progression, which is, or one flat two, I guess you could call it, which is sort of like a Phrygian minor thing. So C minor to D flat major or D flat major seven, or even D flat major nine you could do. It's a really fun chord progression. I actually did a whole uh, MIDI pack just based off this chord progression. But the whole idea of this is that everything's really far up top as well, right? And on this particular patch that I designed, it kind of creates like a whistle effect, which is kind of cool. It sounds like a bird or something. But I'm just following what's happening. And the melody kind of falls in that direction, right? So these are like ways you can practice. And also, it's probably obvious to say, right? But when you're practicing with a pad, you're allowed to play slowly. <laughs> so, you know, every time we're trying to like practice something on the piano, we have to play it like up to speed of the song that we're learning and we always mess up. Um, when you play a pad, you're actually kind of inspired to play slower. So you can think about what chord you're going to go to. <laughs> it's just kind of funny, but um, it's nice. You want to just let that chord ring out, hear what it does. Pick your melodic spots, you know. If I want to jump up to maybe something different, modulate a little bit. Try a different spot, right? You can do that. It's very fun. Modulate even more. Follow it down, follow it down, follow it down, resolve it. So anyway, these are just some examples. You can do this stuff with synthesizers, make the voices more open, try the voice leading, or have your right hand play a simple melody that follows what's happening in the chord progression. Those things really help. And it's great to practice on pads because 
you're allowed to play slower and just explore things harmonically, which I think is just really inspiring and fun. I hope you guys got something out of this video. Hit the like button, and subscribe. There's links down below to my preset sounds, my MIDI packs, everything I produce for my Patreons. Bunch of fun stuff, lots of free stuff too. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Have fun making your music.